for what you're going to see in the clip by Saeed, um, who's going to talk from a very specific reference point about a specific type of oppression. I wanted to give us a background in generalized oppression and what that sort of looks like. And also because through this series, and especially this evening, we'll be talking a lot about us versus them. And as we talk about that, it's important that we try to figure out how do we get to the us versus them mentality? How do we take difference, which doesn't necessarily have to be negative, and turn it into social hierarchy and institutional oppression? The theory of the cycle of oppression, in a very low-tech way in a minute, I'm going to show you, um, is that there are six steps to oppression, each one bigger than the next one, and that what you end up with is this sort of institutionalized oppression that is pervasive and that affects both groups, the dominant group and the subordinate group. We're going to sort of look at how that happens. And I think I can take this. All right. I recognize you probably can't read that. The visual is enough. Fear of difference is step one. And when you think about fear of difference, it is sort of what it sounds like. If I was to ask you, what does fear of difference mean? Who had a quick working definition of fear of difference? I'll do something somebody told me once at a workshop. If you don't volunteer, I'll volunteer help you. <laughs> so before I come down and pick on someone at random, does somebody want to give us a working definition of fear of difference? Yeah. Stereotypes are pretty much automatic. 
If you ever take my health class in ninth grade, we'll talk about why you have to stereotype. I won't get into that here. But that stereotyping, developing those root traits, leads you to the next part, which is prejudice. And a lot of people confuse the stereotype and the prejudice, and there's a slight difference. When you think of prejudice, how is that a little bit different than just the stereotype? What do you think? What do you think of the next step? You've got less contact because of fear. Stereotypes, yeah? Acting on the stereotypes. Close. That's, that's getting to step four. Before you act on it, what's the next one, Michael? Um, irrational judgment. Okay, judgment. And Michael's going to add irrational judgment. Right. So this is where you begin to determine whether you think the stereotype is positive or negative, and thus the group is positive or negative. So now you've taken the trait and you've added the value to it. And depending on how you think about that, it's going to lead you to part four, which is discrimination, which as he was saying, is the action that you take based on that. Discrimination is an individual action against an individual. It's something that I do to Malcolm or that I do to Katrina to show that I'm not so cool with the groups I perceive them to belong to. So discrimination is individual to individual. It's big or small, and we often think it's only negative, but we can also discriminate positively against people. How could you discriminate positively against Right, and if you think they're really good at math, what might you do in school? What action might you take based on that? Ask them questions, promote them to the honors section, that sort of thing, without really having a basis for that. So you can, or you can promote someone to a position without them really being qualified, but just because of your perceptions of their group status. So discrimination works both positive and negative, and those individual acts lead you and support a larger systemic act that's called institutional oppression. How is institutional oppression going to be different from discrimination? What's institutional oppression? What are some examples of institutional oppression? Someone on this side of the room, I'm going to bow and tell in a second. What about institutional oppression? Can you think of a time or a clear example in history of institutionalized 